Hey guys, John here. Today we are in Arturia Pigments 5, which is pretty awesome. And today's patch, we're going to be making a sequence called Infected Mushroom, and it sounds something like this. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this bad boy here. This one is kind of complex a little bit, I guess, but uh, I guess you be the judge here. So let's open up a fresh copy of pigments and kind of start from scratch and see how this, how this patch is made. Okay, so we have a new preset on this guy. Now, if we load up the original, this infected mushroom, so first things first, let's turn off our sequencer because that's going to be a whole thing. And then also let's turn off our effects. But what we can do, I guess, for now is turn off FXB and A, and I guess leave this on for now, which essentially turns off the effects, which is actually going to be this guy. Where right, that's going to be our main sound. Okay. So basically, we are using the Engine 1 wavetable. We're going to be using an analog engine, and we're going to be using a little bit of the utility, and we're going through an MS-20 filter. Okay, so first things first, let's turn off our utility, let's turn off the analog, and let's focus on the wavetable and kind of see what's happening here, right? Okay, so basically, this video is going to be using some of the new wavetables that come in Pigments 5. So if we go to our wavetable engine, which we're already located here, we can see on this one, we're gonna be on one called Fake Sync, which is actually a really cool sound. So Basic Waveforms, Pigments 5, and then down here called Fake Sync. So let's double click this guy. And we are, <laughs> let me switch in this here. So we're gonna be on this guy. Right, and if we look down over here, our position is gonna be at 292. So let's bring this position up to 292, something kind of like that here. Right, and we know if we're gonna be using this guy, that this is going to be modulated, right? We can see the position changing. And we're doing that via this random one. So if we're here in a random tab, when we look on the first one, it's going to be on sample and hold and re-triggered from the poly keyboard. So let's go ahead and add that. So if you kind of copy this here, this is going to be random one. So we can drag and drop here. And we're going to get the modulation depth in just a moment. But change it from Turing to sample and hold. And then we see here that this is going to be the poly keyboard. So we can change that to poly keyboard. And white noise is fine. So if we go back to this guy, we can see that it's moving and the exact modulation depth is going to be 0.25. So <laughs> the exact one, so 0.25. Awesome. Okay. Pretty cool. Aside from that, we're, we're going to be adding a little bit of unison over here. So let's give it uh, how many voices, two voices of unison. And then I believe for this guy, we're going to leave it on stereo and the detune should be default at 1.5. So that's pretty much... It's pretty much what we're doing. It kind of has that like computery robotic kind of vibe. Which naming this was kind of thinking like robot mushroom or so. I don't know why mushroom has been in my head, but yeah, something with the mushroom. So I guess infected mushroom because it sounds kind of infected, I guess. Okay. So this one's pretty much done. So we can turn off the wavetable for now and let's look at the next engine. So this here is going to be an analog. So we can turn this on and change this to an analog engine. So what's going on here? So we're dropping this down by an octave, so we can go ahead and drop that down right now. So down 12 semitones. And for this guy, we're not gonna be using any unison, anything like that, but we have a saw wave and we have a square wave and both of these guys are gonna be fully in the mix. So square wave, bring this all the way up like that. So we have something like that, right? Nothing too crazy. And if we go to this guy, it's gonna sound a little bit different, so let's turn off our filter. this guy. Now something that you might notice, if I keep hitting the notes here, it stays in the center and then this guy is kind of bouncing around the stereo field. So what is happening here? So on this guy, we're going to be using the voice pan and we're modulating this with random two at 0.5. So let's go and take a look at this random two and start dragging and dropping this guy. So random two is going to our voice pan, right? Because every note that we hit, it's kind of cool to have the voices kind of move around the stereo field. It gives us a little bit of a, a wider feeling, right? So by default, this is 0.25. Let's increase this to 0.5, something like that. So it's kind of it's kind of a wide stereo field, but it's it's kind of cool in the same sense. So this next one is going to be sample and hold and poly 
uh, poly keyboard for the retrigger. And this one's kind of nice here. So this value is 154. I'll explain that in just a second. So sample and hold, we're kind of default on the second one, poly keyboard. Now, what's cool here is this is going to be, if we hit these notes, they're very square, right? And it's very choppy. It's kind of moving these voices instantly, right? But if we have these linked and we kind of go a little bit, maybe like 100, something like that, it's going to be a little bit more curved and it's going to be smoother as we go through the stereo field. Because there's a little motion going between the different areas of the field, which is kind of nice. So that's going to be how those move around the stereo field. Okay, so aside from this guy, let's turn off our wavetable here. Okay, so we're pretty much in the ballpark in the, uh, yeah, in the ballpark, I guess. <laughs> I got that saying right. Credit where credit's due, right? So let's turn this analog engine off and focus on the utility engine. So this guy is kind of interesting because we're using the first noise as this drive, which is kind of a transient, and then this analog noise as kind of a uh, kind of a little bit of an attack kind of thing for this sound. So if we go here to the other pigments and we go to our utility engine, let's turn this guy off. So let's focus first on this analog noise because that's kind of how I made it, right? So we can just turn this on. And if you look down here, we see the volumes all the way down, but this is modulated by envelope two, right? At 0.47. So let's bring this all the way down and bring envelope two and then go to 0.47, something like that. And this, you can adjust to taste how much of that attack you want and you just control it via this, uh, this mapping right here. So if we're in envelope two, let's take a look and see what's going on for envelope two. So there's a slight little difference here for this guy, right? So our attack is one, which is going to be the same. Our decay is 500 for this, which is default, but we do need to bring this up a little bit higher to 877. So let's bring this up to eight, or are we 877, something like that. And it doesn't have to be exact, I guess. It is exact, but you know what I'm saying. And then the decay curve is negative 5.68. So let's bring this down to negative 5.68. So it's really just uh, a nice way to give a little bit of an attack at the... Uh, at the attack of the sound, right? It gets a little bit sharper. It's kind of more pronounced in that sense. So if we went to this guy, we're kind of getting that. Just a little bit of noise burst every time we hit a key, which is kind of nice. And that's going to be triggered through the uh, through the sequencer, which we're going to get to in just a little bit. So this next one is this drive. So if we click this here, we can see that this is going to be in transients and this is going to be on drive. So let's take a look at that. So go down here to transients and then we have drive. They face in alphabetical order. That's very convenient. So... This is going to be on drive, and this is getting a little bit of high pass at 37%. So bring that to 37, something like that. And then filter is going to filter one, which is fine. And then this volume is actually controlled via this macro three, which is called snare, because it kind of gives a little bit of a snare vibe. So let's go ahead and change that. So snare, uh, turn my caps off, off. So snare, there we go. And then we can basically bring this down and then macro three, drag and drop. And we can really give it the full amount if we want to. I think I did it on this one as well, right? Yeah, so it's a full amount. So as we bring this up, it's just going to control that knob and give us a little bit of a snare sound. Okay, so that's basically our three oscillators. So if we turn these three on here and we focus this guy. That's basically the sound that we get. And for this guy, if we turn these on as well. Okay, so we're pretty much in the same spot. Now for this guy, if we send this to the filter and focus this one again. We're going to have a little bit of a different sound, and this because we're using a different filter, which is going to be the MS-20, so we can scroll right to the MS-20. And our cutoff manually is going to be at 108, so 108. Now, this part's kind of important because with these type of patches, the range of the cutoff really gives a cool timbre, and it's kind of restricted via the macro, which we're going to get to right now. So 108, right, 108 is fine. And then we're also modulating this with envelope 2 at 0.33, and we just set up envelope 2, which is nice, so drag and drop. And what did I say? Point, yeah, point three three. So let's bring this up just a little bit like that and focus this guy or so something kind of like that. And then our resonance is going to be down completely, right? Because we're going to modulate that with the, uh, or control it with the uh, macro. But for our cutoff, we're doing about 37. So macro one, drag and drop here, and then a, ma a value of 37, something like that. So we can kind of go, that's really our range where we see this kind of blue thing going over. Okay, and we can label this cut off. There we go. Now for our resonance, this one's pretty simple. We can just drag and drop macro two onto this guy, relabel this as res, which is fine for resonance. And then the depth is gonna be 0.72, which is quite a lot. And it's kind of really close to that self oscillation point where it kind of hurts. So we're kind of pushing the, uh, the boundaries here. 
right? And it sort of started to peak here, but we're gonna we're gonna control that a little bit later. Okay. So that's pretty much all I believe we have to do here. Now we can get into the effects, which is really fun. So if we go to our effects tab and look at this guy, so I guess we can turn on the first effects A. So basically we have a delay for the first one, which is kind of nice. This is here. Now our time is going to be one over four, which is going to be default. That's fine. And the value is going to be 21. So we can bring this over to 21. We'll set the macros up at the end. So don't you worry about that. And for the most part, a lot of this is going to be default, except our high pass is 145. So we can bring that up, something like that. And then our low pass is going to be 43 something. So that's kind of fine right there. Okay. So we have our delay. Pretty cool. Next, we're going into a distortion. So let's change this out to the distortion. And this guy is going to be on tape. So we can scroll over here to tape. And our drive is going to be 23.2, something like that. And our dry wet is going to be on 57. So quite a lot like that. Now here's where some of the magic happens in this distortion. And I hope you guys use this option in the distortion because it's really helpful. So down here, we can turn on this high pass, right? And our cutoff is going to be manually set at 558, five, right? So we can bring this to 558. Five, okay, cool. Now our resonance is going to be at 3.1. So pretty significant 3.1. Okay. So what's really cool about this here is that we have a little bit of that first random at 0.13, which already did that first random. That's fine. So drag and drop, and then go to 0.13. So we're kind of moving a little bit more of that distortion, right? Because the routing is pre. So this is happening before it goes into the distortion. And it changes a lot if you go to post. It's not really as pronounced. So we're kind of getting a different texture, different timbre every single time that we hit that note, which is really nice. So next up, we have a reverb. So let's go ahead and load a reverb. Whoops, not shimmer. Uh, reverb. There we go. So this one is going to be at 40% here, which is kind of going to be this default. Now, the pre-delay is 44 milliseconds, so we can increase that a little bit more time. I think the size is the same at one, I believe. Yep. And then our decay is just a little bit less, right? We don't need that much of it. And then we're kind of reducing our low pass here. What do we do? Three, two, six, eight, something like that. So somewhere around here, that's fine. And the reverb's to taste, right? That's kind of a, a personal thing, I suppose. So that's for the first bank. Now the second one, let's go ahead and turn this on. Then we're going into a, another delay. So let's go to our next bank and let's select a delay again. Now this one is going to be one over eight dotted. So one over eight and then select this button here and we go to dotted. Now this value is going to be 0 0.20. So that's going to be default. That's fine. And I don't believe we're doing much in, unless uh, we're actually moving this uh, high pass. I think 140, something like that. And then kind of bring down the slow pass. Nothing too crazy. And then next up, we have a multiband. So we're our, our multiband here. Now for this guy, I'm kind of just bringing this up a little bit like that. And then maybe a little bit of the highs. And this is always really to taste. Okay, so last up here is going to be an EQ. Now this is kind of a dual function in a, in, a, in a way. So this node down over here, so this first one, we're going to be on uh, frequency 125. Now this is kind of just removing some of the mud. So 125, and we're really not taking out too much. So 127, that's fine. Just take it about down like a deep or something. But this guy over here is kind of more of a tonality thing. So this is 737. So the second guy, let's go 737, something. Eh, that's fine. And then we're kind of just bringing this up by what, two deeps or so, something like that. And if we double click this to default, kind of that area, obviously not so much, but that's kind of the area we're kind of focusing a little bit. Now, a cool thing to do if you're also curious if you want to do something a little bit more crazy, you can always drag this random on the frequency and, and kind of, I guess, shorten the range of where this knob is going to go to give you a little cool tonality as this guy's going to move around according to that random. So that's basically the... Uh, the effects. So now comes the sequencer, right? So we have our sound. So it's pretty cool as is. So with this sequencer, if we turn this on, we're kind of doing some interesting things. So now we're not going to go through every single value because you can just download the preset in the video description, but I kind of want to talk to you about the thought process. So we're using 16 steps so we can drag and drop this all the way to 16. Now, the main idea is we're going to be in Phrygian because it's kind of really nice for some acid sounding kind of things right there. And we're regening or re, I guess regeneration, auto regen by one bar. 
which basically means that we're going to roll the dice every single bar and what parameters are going to be rolled. Those are going to be the velocity a little bit, which is kind of default there, and the gate length, which is kind of cool because every note's not going to be the exact same length and time. So it kind of gives it a little bit of freshness. So we're also doing this mode of random. So it's going to be random every single time. But the fun part for this guy, so if we play this again and we have something like this. So the sequencer is kind of bouncing off all sorts of different places. So the idea is that for these first two notes, it's kind of they're kind of fine. Let's bring this one up here by C sharp. Let's bring this to Phrygian down here. I need to move this up a little bit to Phrygian and then make sure that we have this lock. Should be deep default, but make sure that's on. So we're going up C sharp and then we're turning off this step. And the next one, we're kind of just going up to G or something like that, right? These next four are going to be fine. This next one, we can probably go step 10 like G again. And really, there's not many too, too many different notes, right? We're just turning a couple off and kind of changing some of these notes. Now, some of the octaves, though, so the second one's going to be up one octave, which kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. And then we can go down here. Step six is down one octave. So step six is down one. And what else do we have? And then step 11 is also down an octave. Now, these are kind of more of a flavor thing, right? And then step 13 is up one octave. So octave here, step one uh, yeah step 13 is plus one and then that's pretty much it so for the most part they're going to be in the same octave we have a, i guess three or two or something like that going down an octave and then you know going up an octave so we're kind of covering a lot of range and if we change our mode to random something like that let's target this guy Right, so that's kind of the process. Now, the only thing that's going to be randomized is basically the velocity if we want to have that, or we can have gate length. So let's go and do that. So for this pitch and for the on off, let's turn these down to zero. And then we can leave velocity, that's fine. We don't want to change our octaves because we just set that manually. And the gate length is kind of cool. And we can do some slide stuff. So that's kind of fun as well. With these slides, I kind of just move these up a little bit. So we can bring down our slide randomness and then kind of just move these up a little bit because it's kind of nice when some of these notes slide into each other. Something kind of like that. I guess we can kind of do on the fly like that. It's fine as well. And we can skip over the on off because obviously they're on and off. All right, we can play with the kick drum. Pretty cool. So now we need to turn on our auto regen. And I selected one bar. You can totally pick a different amount. So that's totally fine. So there's that as well. You can always do the amp mod velocity and turn that up all the way if you want to. So definitely a cool patch. Now, what's really sweet in Pigments is that if we don't want to have this sequencer and have these specific notes, we can always turn it to the arpeggiator and then play a chord or something. We can go here to up, down, so on, so forth, however we want to do that. It's totally up to you. Uh, the sequence is kind of something just simple. You can always change the different notes or the different scale and do something like that. And yeah, that's pretty much how the sequencer works. So that's kind of the thought process behind that. Now, if we go to our effects, the last thing we really have to do in this patch is complete is map this fourth macro. So we can drag and drop the fourth one to delay, to the distortion, to the reverb, to this delay, and then that should be about it. So the easy way to do that is hover our mouse. So we have 21, bring this down, and then we can bring this up to 0.21, and then our distortion, 57, bring that down, bring this up to 0.57 right there. And then we have our reverb, so 40%, bring this down and bring this up to 0.40. And then our next effect is going to be the delay. So 20, bring this down, and then bring this down to 0 0.20. And that's about it. So bring this up so our effects are active. Double click, rename this to effects, and there we go. Yeah, so there's that snare. I don't think we really show that too much, but yeah, it almost sounds like there's 
a snare drum that's kind of just hitting this thing the whole time, which is pretty sweet. It might be something kind of cool to automate if you're using this patch and you're kind of going up into a drop and you're kind of messing with the cutoff and the resonance and you just slowly increase the snare to something. Yeah, that might be kind of cool. Might be fun to uh, play with. But yeah, that's how you make this sequence an infected mushroom. If you want to get a copy of this preset, it is available in the link description below and it can be yours. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.